So admittedly, I got a little excited with the Ares video, so what we're gonna do is take a step back, or rather five steps back, and explain the roles. I'm Frost, and this is Tools of the Trade. We're starting with ADC. ADC stands for Attack, Damage, Carry. Notably, the Hunters fill this role. Why? Well, they're designed so that in the late game with the right items and levels, they'll be putting out consistent damage on enemies and objectives. So really, your job is to just get to that point in the game and try not to fall behind so that you can do that damage that you are so naturally well-equipped to put out. Big important points. Get this into your head. Your minion wave and your purple buff. Get those as often as you possibly can. Depending on the team that you're on, you also get the red buff and the back harpies on your side. So if you want to have a passive ADC playstyle, you only fight so that you don't get out pressured so that someone else takes your purple. Generally, passive is the best way to play if you have a hunter who's not the best early game, or you've started falling behind, or honestly, if you're new to the role, being passive is alright. Now a common misconception is that dying gets you behind as a hunter. It's not that, it's all the farm that you're missing out on while you're dead. Every creep that goes into tower or every buff that you can't collect because you're dead is delaying your late game. So quick little tip, if you're getting rotated on by three or four people really early in the game and you know you're gonna die, go ahead and just clear out that next minion wave that's next to you. You'll come back up and you won't have missed much, or kill their hunter if you can. Both of you being delayed is not a bad thing. As an ADC, what would be better than getting to late game on schedule? Well, getting there slightly ahead of schedule. The oracles, the gold furies, the towers, keep an eye on those, those get you ahead. Now what's better than getting to late game ahead of schedule? making the other ADC late. Steal their purple buff. Steal their red if you can manage. Their back harpies tend to be not worth it. Most of the time, they're not gonna give these things up without a fight, so you have to get good at fighting. Get good at understanding when the jungler or the mid laner is gonna come for you. You can deny the enemy ADC the minion wave as well by shoving it under tower or zoning them from it. Killing them is okay, but remember, it's that farm that they're missing out on that really puts them behind. Keep in mind that you are essentially one of the big winning conditions. That means you have a massive target on your forehead. The support's gonna wanna kill you early game, the jungler's gonna wanna kill you soon after, the mid laner comes in every now and again, and then the final raid boss is gonna come after you too, the solo laner. And of course, their ADC is gonna try and kill you too. And they have good reason to hunt you down because if you get ahead, you could close a game out all by yourself. And if you fall behind, they still have to keep you down because once you get to your final form, it's as if early and mid game never happened. That should get you to about average. I phoned a friend to tell you how to get to above average, and he had this to say. You have slain an kill. enemy. Kill. 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 Hey, stop a mine. Mortal light. Enemy has enemy left the game. 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 Um, I think the biggest that separates me from like platinum diamond players is knowing which fights to take in lane and I think the easiest way to go about that as an ADC is to play with your power spikes which is basically like finishing each item or if you happen to get your back off a little bit earlier than they do um, you basically just get that spike and force a fight on them um, also I think another thing that separates me is like being able to trade efficiently and being able to juke auto attacks because um, juking is very underrated as ADC um, especially in Plant and Diamond because they just juke worse um, they move in very predictable patterns they are very scripted in their ability usage and when they use abilities like if they're holding W randomly, like, oh, I guess I'm gonna get ganked right here, and, like, professional players <laughs> try to make it just not seem so obvious, or, like, hey, he's Cupid, he's holding W past his wave, I wonder what he's going to do, like, just make things not be so scripted, and for basic ADC mechanics, uh, another thing is warding, I think ADCs need to be the person that's warding just a lot. Just you need to be buying two wards on pretty much every single back because ADC is such a gankable lane now. Um, you need to pretty much always pay attention to where the jungler is, where the jungler can be. You don't really need to pay attention to like mid laner so much, but just be aware of the jungler because 
even though if your jungler is not over there, it's still your fault if you die. Like, everyone's gonna rage, everyone's gonna be like, my jungler needs to be in my purple buff, like, yada yada yada, but it's still your fault. And like, that's just what a part of ADC in Season 5 is, or ADC overall is. You need to watch your own back. And yeah, you just need to be very flowy, and just be able to change your playstyle instantly. Knowing, it's not even like, like, people have always called me too passive, and then in Season 3 it was like, wow, Barracuda is so aggressive, and we're just like, I'm just using the situations that are presented to me. I'm not changing my playstyle. It, this is just what's presented to me, and I'm going to play with it. Like, and that's how every ADC should, ADC should play every game, is just play with what you're given. Like, you can't change the fact that your jungler never comes to your purple buff, you just have to adapt to it. Or change the fact that their jungler n never came over, and if their jungler never came over, you need to be pushing your lead because their jungler is obviously doing other things on the map. And I know I've said jungler a lot, but it's very important as an ADC to track the jungler and to know where he is, and it also kind of comes back to your support, but I know it's not really relevant, but your support needs to be putting out deep wards, like, so you and the uh, ADC, or the support and the ADC can play together and play off of each other. Or another thing is to watch your health. I know it sounds like obvious, but for poke trades, just be very aware of how much damage you're taking and how much damage you're doing, um, because, like, even still, I still get caught off guard by either... I'm accidentally tanking creeps or I'm accidentally tanking a whole wave while we're fighting because all of those little things can change a lot so just make sure your support is tanking the wave whenever you guys are 2v2 boxing in lane because um, melee creeps do a lot of damage. Like archer creeps not so much but if you're getting smacked by that big brute or whatever he is like be very very cautious of that. I would say it's very important once you get your stacking item before then, not so much. Before then, I would focus mainly on where they're positioning, where the enemy duo lane is positioning, and when you can get off successful auto attacks, because I value hitting their support with an auto attack over getting a last hit on a minion. But it's all situational. Um, well, obviously, like, I could say that about everything. But I'm not going to, like, if, if I'm playing a ranch game or a pro game, like, my main priority is getting poke off, not uh, getting last hits. Um, even though it is very important, like, if you're given the option of, to get a last hit or to just, like, brain dead, clear the wave, it's very important to get last hits. Like, if, you aren't, if you're not boxing, then last hits are very important. Because last hits can change whether you get a ward, whether you get a health potion, and both of those are very important. Um, like, if you last hit all the minions, like, you're definitely coming off, like, 50 gold up. Um, so, yeah. Very, very, very important. Say not as important as trading or like getting the poke off. Like you don't need to be so concerned with last hits that you're putting yourself out of position or like trying to get that auto attack off um, when the enemy is like advancing on you or putting pressure. Yeah, I hated that game by the way. That was not a fun game for me. Um, but basically what I did there is I kind of just greedily tried to get as much farm as I possibly could. Um, so basically what I wanted to do on the map was regardless of whether I was getting ganked or not, I was always trying to um, just basically kill the waves if I was getting gone on. And as well as my team was letting me get more farm by myself, but also protecting me um, to where I could basically get back in the game. Yeah, honestly it's not even that bad if you're dying and they're two or three men splitting the wave, and you're soloing the wave. Like, even in Season 5, like, sometimes when, like, my support dies in lane, I'm happy because I get to solo the wave. <laughs> like, <laughs> if I feel like I'm trading, like, I'm literally trading ahead in experience. And, like, that's basically, that was basically our game plan then, was obviously I hated dying that much for a professional match. But my main game plan was, if I'm going to die, I need to get the wave. And basically, I have two options there. I can either not die and never get farm ever, because I'm pretty sure they were zoning. Or I can push up 50-50 if the jungler is there. If the jungler is there, I'm just going to full commit to the wave and die. And basically time my deaths, or time me being on the map with 
either our mid pressure or our jungle pressure or our buffs and basically hope that if I die they're not going to get any buffs or objectives off of it and make sure my team's there to cover. But it is very scary as an ADC to basically have no mobility and like I think we died like level 1 like they 2 men or they form yeah they like hit lane or whatever because they out treated me. No, that's like straight up what it would be, because uh, as far as lane mechanics go, like anyone can last hit a wave and anyone can do that if they're tryharding. And I'm going to make fun of you on stream, but obviously that's the right play to do most of the time is just freeze the wave unless you've got farm to do. Um, but honestly, the biggest thing is if a random ADC player just takes a really good fight and hits all their buttons on me and just basically solos me. like. That's the biggest thing, because a lot of bad players, or a lot of players that aren't pros, don't really know when to press W, and when to just play aggressive, and that's why I would be so shocked if a player won a 1v1 against me, or like, played a, like a 1v1 really well, and not like, oh, that guy happened to triple bounce me, that's cool, like, that's not really outskilling me, like, a player forced a fight if it was a really good 1v1 for him and it caught me off guard um i think that would be the only thing like that would catch me off guard at this point i mean the most general tip is just do as much damage while taking as little damage as possible and try to peel for your teammates in team fights while not putting yourself in a bad situation because even though you are an adc it is still your job to peel for your mid laner and appeal for your teammates and make sure they're fine so you're not always the guy that's just like the Call of Duty player running around killing everything. Like it is still a team game, and you still need to play with your teammates and help keep them alive, um, and not playing safely just because you're 100% HP. Like it's okay to take damage, just don't take too much.